have a Rails application here which lists many articles and I would like to add a search feature here where someone could just type in some keywords at the top to search these articles. Now these articles are primarily text-based, so I should use some kind of full text search engine here instead of trying to string together SQL queries. In this episode, I will do this using Thinking Sphinx, but there are a variety of solutions for full text searching in a Rails app, so you should weigh all of your options. You may also wanna check out episode 278 where I show you how to do this through a Solar and Sunspot. Now the first thing we'll need to do to set this up is install Sphinx. Now because Sphinx communicates directly with your SQL database, there are some limitations. It currently only supports MySQL or Postgres in your Rails application, so if you're using the default SQLite or maybe a MongoDB, then uh, you probably wanna look for other options. But assuming you're using MySQL or Postgres, let's get started installing Sphinx. Now one of the easiest ways to do this is using Homebrew. So if you have that set up, it's just a simple brew install Sphinx. Now, if you don't have Homebrew, you might wanna check out the website for other installation options. And then once that command finishes, it tells you that you also have to set up MySQL or Postgres, and you can do that through Homebrew as well. Now, once you have that set up, if you're unfamiliar with how to uh, set the database up in a Rails app, you can create a new Rails app and then pass a dash D option and just pass in the name of a database and it will set up the Rails app with that database. Now, I already have a Rails app here, so let's get started using Thinking Sphinx. Now, Thinking Sphinx is by Pat Allen, and it's an older gem, but it's still well-maintained. And I recommend you check out the documentation here, uh, particularly the indexing and searching sections. There's a lot of great information there. To set this up, just go to the gem file of your application and add the Thinking Sphinx gem inside of here, and then run the bundle command to install it. Next, go into the model you want to search by. In this case, I want to search on the article model here and define the index. And to do that, you just call define index here in the class and then pass it a block. And then to add a column for full text searching, just pass in a call to indexes and then pass in the name of the column. In this case, it's content that I want to search on. Now notice this is not a symbol right here, it's actually a method call, but that's just the way the Thinking Sphinx DSL works. Now another column I want to index is the article's name column. However, there is a gotcha here. There are two methods which are reserved name and ID. So for those, if you wanna pass those in for index values, you need to pass them in as symbols instead of calling them directly like we're doing here for the content. Now, if you ever want to make a column sortable, you can pass in the sortable as true option when you're defining it here. So that way, when you're performing the search, you can add it as a sort option. Now it's also possible to index columns through an association. For example here, article has many comments, so if we want the comments content to be included inside of the search, then we can add a call to indexes, comments.content, because content is a column on our comments model here. Now because we're going through an association, it's a good idea to pass in an as option to assign a name to this index field. In this case, I'm just going to call it comment uh, content like that. Now, if you want to index multiple columns at once, you can pass it in an array here. For example, if we call indexes, we can pass in an array. And let's say we want to index the author's name, but it's split up into two columns, first name and last name. So we can say author.firstname and author.lastname will be the uh, author's name. And let's assign an as option here so we can index this as the author's name here so we can reference it through that single field. So this article model looks pretty good here, but in order to search on it, we need to first build the index. We can do this by calling rake thinking sphinx index to uh, build the index. And once that's done, we can just call rake thinking sphinx start to start up the sphinx server. So now we just need to add a search field to the articles page here and hook it up to thinking sphinx. So here's what that articles index template looks like where it's just listing the articles, and at the top here, I want to add a form. Now this form is so simple, I'm just going to paste in the code. Here I'm just using form tag, going to the same index action with a git request, and I have a search parameter here that submit, submitted through a text field. So this means inside of the articles controller here in the index action, this will get triggered when the user tries to search, so I need to search on our article model here, and I can do that with a call to search. So this is a class method that Thinking Sphinx adds for us onto our model, and then we can just pass in our search parameter query string that the user types in. And now when I reload this page here, there's our search field, and when I try typing in a string, looks like it's working. That finds the article that matches that given text. 
And I can even search by, for example, this author name here, and that will find it properly. And I can even uh, further filter it down by just stringing together any words I want, and that will properly uh, filter out the articles. Now there are several options which you can pass into this search method. Uh, one of them is the order option, and you can set that to a column that you made sortable when you define the index. In this case, we made the name column sortable, so we can set it to that, so that way it sorts it by name. So now, for example, if I hit reload here, it's going to sort based off of the name here instead of by relevance, which is the default. And you can also pass pagination options into here as well. For example, we could say page is one and per page is uh, 20. And uh, this will work if you have will paginate installed. I think Kaminari support is being worked on uh, if it's not here already. Now, what if you want to filter out results based off of a specific field that you've indexed? Well, in this case, we can use a conditions hash, for example, and filter out the name field and say we only want articles that are named Batman, for example. So if I try reloading this page that displays all the articles, it will only display the one article that matches that given name. Now what if we want to filter our results based off of a non-text-based attribute such as the author ID column? So we could say author ID, uh, let's set it to two. Now this will not work because we have not indexed this author ID column here. So inside of our article model here, we need to add the author ID column to our Sphinx index. However, there are multiple ways that we can index something inside of Sphinx. One is using what's called a field, and that's what this index is called does, and uh, that's really great for text-based content. However, if you're doing numeric or dates or times, then I prefer to use what's called an attribute, and to do that inside of Thinking Sphinx, you have to make a call to has, and then pass in the name of the column you want, such as author ID. And we can index other numeric or date time attributes here, such as the published at date time column, and that way we can search off of that as well. Now, since we changed the index definition, we need to rebuild the index. And for that, you can call rake, thinking Sphinx, rebuild. And because Sphinx has already started, it will shut it down and then do the index and then start it back up again. Now, when we're doing our search, we're using this conditions hash here. However, this is used for searching fields inside of Sphinx and author ID is what's called an attribute. So to search based off of an attribute, you have to make a with hash like this instead of a conditions hash. So now when I reload this articles page here, it's going to filter down the articles to just those by Clark Kent because that is the author ID number two. Now remember, I also added the published at date time column in here as well as an attribute. So that means we can filter the results by this and we can even use a range for filtering. So for example, we can say, uh, let's say three weeks ago and up until time zone now. And that way it'll find every article within three weeks. And if I reload this page here, that works. Now it's only finding this one article because it was only published within the past three weeks. So that's how you filter results using the with option. Now there are a couple of other options I wanna show you here. One is called field weights. And with this, we can tell Sphinx which fields should be ranked higher in the relevance sorting. For example, if the name of the article matches the keywords that they type in, then it should be ranked higher in relevance. So maybe we want to set this to 20. Uh, the default is one. And uh, let's say maybe the, uh, the uh, content of the article can be uh, 10, and maybe the author name could be five and so on. So you can choose exactly how relevant you want each field inside of your model to be. Really cool option. I'll finish off by showing you the match mode option. There are various modes you can switch into. For example, you can change it to the Boolean mode here. And with this option, we can pass in a query with uh, two keywords, for example, maybe Superman and a Krypton. And then it will only find an article which matches both of these keywords. However, if we use a pipe here, we can say match Superman or Krypton. Then we'll look for articles which have either keyword. We can also use a minus sign to say Superman, but not Krypton, and that way it finds only that one article. So as you can see, Thinking Sphinx has some really nice options when it comes to searching. However, I think it falls a little short when it comes to re-indexing, because at the moment, if we create, update, or destroy any of these article records, the index will not automatically be updated, so it will be out of date. To pick up any changes in the database, you'll need to run this command, rake Thinking Sphinx, re-index, and that will just re-index everything. Now, Thinking Sphinx re-index is quite fast, which is a good thing, but 
this command will still need to be triggered somehow. I recommend setting up a cron task, and that way it just triggers it every so often. Uh, you can do that with the whenever gem, like I showed in episode 164. Now, if you have a large database and you need to re-index frequently, be sure to check out delta indexes inside of the documentation here, because it allows you to index only a portion of the database, the records that have changed, instead of re-indexing everything. Well, that's it for this episode on Thinking Sphinx. I didn't cover everything here, so be sure to check out the documentation. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful.